after 10 palettes and 50 colors, we are going to go through the super granulating colors I think you should invest in and which ones you can probably skip either because they're easily mixable or because they're too similar to other colors. In reality, I'm pretty much going to focus on the ones that are too similar. In 50 colors, there are a lot that are quite similar, which is sort of disappointing. I wish there was a bit more variation, especially in some of the colors. Once we start to compare them on individual cards, you'll be able to see just how similar some are. I have sorted them out so that all the ones that are X green or X blue are together. There are a couple that are in single piles and so I'm just going to throw those in with whatever color seems best but these are all the palettes everything from Tundra to Galaxy and their swatches are in that order as well. We're going to start with pinks there are only three pinks in the super granulating series they're Tundra pink, Haze pink, and Galaxy pink and luckily they're all very different from each other, which I appreciate, especially as we get into stuff that is going to be a lot less different from each other. Overall, I would say I use Tundra Pink. And now that I sort of understand the pigments that make up Galaxy Pink, I will probably use pinks like it more often now that I know it's made up of a brown and a purple. Haze Pink, I find leans too blue to be a pink for me though I have used it as clouds when I'm trying to create like a moody sky or a misty sky. Colors like haze pink are great. So overall, pinks aren't the ones that I'm worried about being super similar, but there are definitely some that are going to be quite identical to each other. So do you need all three pinks? No. Really, if I was going to pick a unique pink, I'd probably go with tundra pink. So for the sake of this, let's choose Tundra Pink as our pink. Let's go into greens because there are many of them. I think nearly every palette had a green. So Tundra. Who's here next? Get Fleecier, then Shire. Then Urban. Then Deep Sea. forest and desert. I would say that, well, for the sake of it, let's just add in turquoise as well because it's by itself uh, glacier turquoise I dislike. There's really nothing going on with it. There's none of the crazy granulation and I just sort of find it meh. So automatically it's getting eliminated. That is also how I feel about forest green. Desert green, I've never been able to find a use for. Deep sea green, it's got some granulation, but I don't love it, so it's going to disappear as well. Now we're down to three, four. Um, glacier green, I actually like. I use it quite a lot in skies and water. Shire green, I also like. It's quite a bright green with a dark blue to it. The way I paint though, I tend to reach for colors like urban or tundra green more often. Though I wish urban green had a bit more going on with it. I feel like its granulation is very single color effect and I wish there was some more going on with it. So we're going to eliminate that one as well. So for now, all three are going to move on, mostly because I feel like it, and we might cull some more later. Next, we're going to move on to olives. There are two, and the Shire Olive that I actually like. It is Shire Olive that I actually like. We're getting rid of Shire Green, and we're keeping Shire Olive. <laughs> I don't like, did I like forest olive? Let's look at the swatch a bit quickly. Um, I think the answer is probably no. No, and it was really easy to mix for. I wouldn't get it. Uh, volcano yellow, let's look at yellows next. There are four in this set. And 
I'm actually happy with how different they are. Uh, I was concerned that they'd be quite similar. They look like they could be quite similar, and they're actually different enough. You can do quite a lot if you have Volcano Yellow. Though, Windsor and Nude makes the same pigment. It looks identical. And it costs less. So, Volcano Yellow is being eliminated because you can get the same pigment for the same amount. Like, it looks the exact same and it costs less. I think my tube from Windsor and from, yeah, I think my Windsor Noon tube cost maybe $8 at my local store. Like, it wasn't a lot compared to the fact that Right now, a 5 mil tube of the super granulating colors are 7.5 pounds a piece. And so they are quite the investment, and that's just for a 5 mil. I, I like... Hmm. I'm going to say... Desert Yellow almost feels like a lighter version of Shire Yellow. What are the pigments? Are the pigments the same? No. Shire Yellow uses PV62, Urban Yellow uses PV16, and Desert Yellow uses PBR7. Okay. I like Urban. And I like... I think I like Desert, because I don't think you can get Shire Yellow much darker than that. But you can get Urban a lot lighter. Let's do blues, because there are many of them. I think all but maybe two palettes have a blue. All but three. Oh, and there are also two indigos. So let's add those two indigos in as well. Just sort of so that we're looking at everything together. I hmm. Okay. Deep sea blue and galaxy blue are boring. I like tundra blue. And I'm saying that because I know from experience that you can use it in mixes. I used it with yellow, with a yellow and with a pink or a red. And it works really well in mixes and that's why I decided to add it to my palette. Because mom had a pan and then I decided to add a pan to my own palette. And so tender blue, definitely. Are any of those other blues at all interesting at lighter concentrations? Um, Shire Blue sort of is. It's got quite a lot of green to it. Glacier Blue. No, Glacier Blue is boring. <laughs> uh, welcome to my life. What's... Deep Sea. Oh, we've got Deep Sea Indigo. Oh, I like Deep Sea Indigo. It's got like a green haze to it. So tentatively, do I like Deep Sea Indigo more than Haze Indigo though? One's a true Indigo and one's not. We're gonna go with Deep Sea. Eliminate Haze. What does Forest Blue look like? Uh, 
I'm gonna move on forest blue. I'm gonna get rid of these. Then let's do reds. There are only two. And even though you can get volcano red pigment other places, I have now tried like six different cadmium reds and none have the right granulation effect. I've talked to friends and none of them can find one that has the right granulation effect. And so I think that means urban red has to move on because it also means that it's sort of impossible to do any of the other mixes without that color. So as fun as urban red is in mixes without volcano red, or as fun as urban red is as a paint without volcano red, like you're not gonna get the right colors when you're mixing yourself. And so volcano red, unfortunately has earned its spot. Next we have oranges, and I don't love any of them. I especially, though, don't like Volcano Orange. And then there were two. Do I actually like either of these? Tundra Orange versus Desert Orange. The answer is no. The answer is also that they are too similar to each other. And this is what I'm talking about. They have different pigments, totally different pigments, but they look pretty similar. And I just feel like they could have done something else. It could have been a different decision made that gave us oranges that had more of a difference. So I'm not going to move any oranges forward. Let's do browns before we get into the purple, blacks, and grays. Because there are also a lot of browns, I think. Seven of the palettes have a brown. And I would not actually consider all of these to be a brown. Clearly, that's, that's a green. They can label it as a brown. It's a green. I like... I don't like this. That's a green. There was one of these that was really hard to mix for. And so I'd say if you were trying to buy a brown because you didn't want to mix for it, Glacier Brown was hard to mix for. And Haze Brown was hard to mix for because my PBK 11 is the wrong pigment size. Urban brown like. Oh, urban. Oh, yeah. Urban brown. So I'd. In all honesty, these two are the ones I'd pick. Galaxy brown, just because I love it. I love the purple in it. It's my favorite brown in the entire series. And then galaxy brown, uh, urban brown because it's the hardest one to mix for, though I do like how neutral haze brown is. So maybe tentatively moving all three forward and then I'll do a bit of a cull of colors because we clearly don't need this many. Violets are up next and there are four. I appreciate that there are sort of different, you know, volcano violet looks pink. Deep Sea and Tundra aren't that different, and then Galaxy is different enough. Uh, I would go with... It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that can be both dark and light, I would probably go with Deep Sea. Just look at this watch. Yeah, Deep Sea. Um, there's already, like, that's Volcano Violet versus Tundra Pink. There is a difference. 
one has blue in it, one doesn't. But if you're just looking for like a pink or a pinkish color, like there's, no, I guess there's like, there's a pretty good difference. You could probably justify having both in a palette. I have both in my palette. Um, I also hoard paints. So like a squirrel. So yeah. <sighs> Uh, that being said, I don't actually use Volcano Violet that often, so I would probably get rid of it. I would keep... I want to say Galaxy, because it's my favorite. That being said, I think Deep Sea is actually more usable. Thank you, Deep Sea. All right, grays. They all look too similar for me. Actually, we're gonna do grays and blacks and you're gonna see exactly what I mean by the fact that they all look too similar. I appreciate these two <laughs> where they're trying, but other than that, they... Other than Galaxy Black, I look pretty similar and I take issue with that because I have so many fantastic handmade granulating grays that don't look the same and so I know it can be done. There is no reason for this section. Like there's no reason for these four sort of desert gray as well to all look that similar but they do. I would keep... Mm, maybe Glacier Black. All right. I would keep... Get rid of that. We keep Desert Gray, because it's different. These all have a blue undertone. This has a yellow undertone. Keep the different, because you might need the different. So it's also very similar to Haze Brown, so one of them might be called in round two. I really like Galaxy Black, but I think we've already got our dark blue. For the sake of making me happy though, it's gonna go in. And then we're going to keep... Really, we're gonna keep one of those colors. But in all honesty, there's not a huge difference. There's one has PB35, PBK11. One has PY159, PR108, PB35, and PBK11. One has PB74, PBK11, and PB35. One has PG36, PBR30 three and PBK 11. Three of them contain some combination of the same pigments plus something extra. So does it make a difference which we keep? Not really. Which one is the darkest is how we're going to decide. And I believe that's pretty black. Sort of black. Nope. Uh, we're gonna keep Urban. No, we're not. We're gonna keep Haze. Purely because I'm tired of keeping colors that come in sets that don't exist. 
So here are the colors that made it through the first round, though I think we're gonna call again because it's quite a lot of colors. It feels like it's too many and that there are probably some similar, like those two. <laughs> so one's a brown, one's a gray, which is which. I'll have it be known, I'm not normally this cynical about paints. If you've watched most of my videos, you'll know that. My issue comes from the fact that these colors are so expensive. They are so expensive and there are so many that are similar that it just sort of feels icky. Like it feels like they should have done more to create different colors. Uh, this is also a really unbalanced set. <laughs> it is very blue and very green, and we are going to get rid of Deep Sea Indigo. We are going to get rid of either Haze Brown or Desert Gray. Are these literally the same pigments? No, nope, they're not. Okay. <laughs> one is PY159 PBK11 and one is PBR7 PBK11. Um, we're gonna get rid of Haze Brown. Are we? Yes. There. That's a, what, set of 15? So from 50, down to 15. Still very blue. Galaxy black versus tundra blue. Hmm. Just getting rid of that. Down to 14. Can we get it down to a set of 12? <laughs> Um, I don't know that we can. All right. Well, from 50 down to 14 isn't bad. It's still very blue. Let me arrange this like I'd have my palette set up and let me just see how I actually like. Would this be a usable super granulating palette for me? And if not, what would I add for take away? Okay, now that it's actually in the order of my palette, I don't actually hate it. Because it, you would have, you'd have the yellow, but you wouldn't have the schminky version. Yeah, I don't actually hate that. It's a much smaller palette still expensive but it's more reasonable and you are you're stuck buying everything open stock which is annoying but is urban brown the only urban color no urban yellow is as well that's the other annoying thing the urban set's really hard to get your hands on so can i are there colors that i'd switch out the urban colors with let me take a quick look i think the answer is no So I could switch out Urban Brown with Glacier Brown, and it still works. The only other yellow options, though, are Shire Yellow, which I don't love, or Volcano Yellow, 
which works, but you can get the same pigment from Winsor Newton for less and it looks the exact same. So I would put it in with the concession that yes, put PY 159 in the palette, but don't necessarily buy the Schmincke version, buy the Winsor Newton version because it's cheaper and it looks the same. And there are less binder separation issues with it. All right. So that's those are the 15 those are the 14 colors I choose. From 50 to 14. And getting rid of the urban colors which are really hard to get. The haze ones are hard-ish to get, but Jackson's tends to have them open stock these days. So as long as you're okay with ordering from the UK, there doesn't seem to be a big issue with getting them. So I hope you enjoyed the wrap up of which colors would I actually buy again. There are probably one or two others, but if I was going to just start over, and buy super granulating colors. These are definitely the ones that sort of stand out to me. I might add in Galaxy Violet. It's just, it's a personal favorite. It doesn't, doesn't serve a purpose. I don't use it all that often. I just love the color. Whereas some of these other ones, I know I use a lot in my pieces. And especially with like the granulating grays and browns, I use almost every piece where I have a gray or a brown. It's always a granulating gray or brown I reach for because I find that it makes the piece much more fun and interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. It's been quite a lot of fun to film. And let me know what project you'd like to see me tackle next.